Hello, this is Sally from LaunchCode and today we are going to learn a little bit more about views and we are going to start a new application called Coding Events. So you already should have set up your project, it should be ready to go and you should have it open so we can start coding. Now the first thing I want to do here is I want to add a new controller. This application is going to be used for us to keep track of different events we want to go to around town such as meetups and conferences. So I need to add a new controller, I'm going to call it Events Controller. Just add new class, ASP.NET Core, MVC controller class, and then events controller. Here it is. We are going to keep that index action method that was generated with our new controller. We just want to add an HTTP get annotation to it to make sure that index only responds to get requests at the route localhost 5001 slash events. And so I'm going to do that here up on line 14. Our index action method is almost ready to go. The final thing we need is we need some events. We do have to put the events somewhere, so we're just going to store them in a list for now. As we work on coding events, you'll find new and more efficient ways to store them. But like I said, we're just going to put them in a list for now so we can focus on our views. I'm going to make this list a class level list so that other action methods in the events controller can use it. So I'm just going to space down here. Static, private, and the type of each item in the list is going to be string. And I'm just going to call my list events. And we will just make it an empty list for now. Over the course of the next couple of videos, we will learn how to use a form to add items to our events list. But for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to add three different events inside the index action method. So I'm going to add three events that I want to go to. I want to go to Strange Loop this year. I want to go to Grace Hopper, and I want to go to a Code with Pride meetup. All right, the final thing we have to do to access this events list in a view is add it to a property in view bag. I want to call this property just events with a lowercase e events equals events. And there we go. Our controller is ready to go and our action method is ready to go. So we just need to save this file and make a view. Now you may remember our first step since we made a new controller is we have to make a new folder in the views directory to hold all the views we will need for events controller. And that folder is just going to be called events. We name our folders after the controllers. So add new folder, events, and then I'm going to add a view in there and we're just going to call it index, index for index action method, new file, MVC view page, index. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of everything at the top. We're just going to start here with line one. I'm going to add a simple H1 to it that just says, you know, coding events. I don't need this extra space here. And then if the events list is empty, I want to display some sort of message that says there aren't any events here. While we do know that the events list currently has three items because we just added those three items to the list, later we are going to set it up so that events are added through a form. And if the events list doesn't have any events added yet, we want to display some sort of message so people know to go to the form and fill it out and add an event. So we'll just view bag dot events, and then we want to use count. And if it is zero, then I'm just going to put this in a P tag, no events yet. All right. Now, if there are items in the events list, what we want to do is we want to just iterate over these items in an unordered list. 
So I need to set up that. And I'm going to go ahead and add my closing tag now. And inside of the unordered list tags, I need to set up a for each loop. So for each string meeting in events. And then this is when I'm going to use list item meeting. So what this is doing inside of the unordered list tags, it's going to go through the entire events list. And for each item it finds in the events list, it's going to add a list item that's just going to include the name of the event. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And this is actually ready to go so we can run it and check out the result. To see the result, we're just going to navigate over to localhost 5001 slash events, and we should see those three events we added inside of our index action method. And here they are. Here are the three events I want to go to. Great job, everyone, and we'll see you in the next video.